chapter eight is chemical reactions and we'll start with section 8.1 which is translating word equations into symbolic equations and we'll re represent reactants and products in a symbolic form so what are reactants and products when you have a chemical reaction occur there are two parts to a chemical reaction the first part is the before which are my reactants and the second part are the products which come after so we have a before and an after the reactants are what I have before the reaction and the products are, are what I have after the reaction so there are some symbols that you need to be familiar with that are used typically in chemical equations for starters if you ever see an arrow the arrow is what divides my reactants and products and it's called the yield sign if you have a two-sided arrow this indicates you have a reversible reaction if you ever have a solid liquid gas or aq for aqueous placed after the substance that describes what phase the substance is in for example you might see hydrogen with a little g and that indicates that you're dealing with hydrogen gas um, also you should know that aq aqueous it literally translates to, translates to aqueous, which means dissolved in water. And so it's a compound that's dissolved in water. And so we label it AQ for aqueous. At the bottom here, these are things that you will find written above the arrow, which indicate a circumstance necessary for the reaction to be carried out. For example, if you see a triangle or heat written above the arrow, then heat is required for the reactants to react. If you see two atmospheres or a certain pressure written above the arrow, then this indicates the pressure that's necessary in order to carry out the reaction. You may see a specific temperature written above the arrow, and then sometimes you'll see a compound written above the arrow, which is known as a catalyst. Catalysts are used to speed up a reaction. and you literally see it at above the arrow. It does not participate in the reaction, however, so keep that in mind. It actually has nothing to do with the products that are formed. So translating equations, we're gonna have to be able to watch out for the following. First, if you have a covalent compound, you want to use prefixes. So pay attention to the pre use the prefixes to determine what your compound is. If it's ionic, you've got charges that you have to switch or cancel. If it's an acid, then pay attention to if it's an ic, us, or hydroic acid. And then the diatomics, keep in mind, are the seven elements that only exist diatomically, and this is when they're neutral. Keep in mind they stand alone, so if they're found with another element, then it's not a diatomic. So let's practice some. I want to translate this equation into a word equation. So as I start, I have some solid iron 3 oxide. When you see the word reacts with, the words reacts with, that means plus, you're adding. And we're going to add carbon monoxide gas. When you see a word like yield, that's where you draw your arrow and if you see and then we have solid iron metal and is going to indicate a plus sign and then carbon dioxide gas in addition to yields you may see the words forms or produces and those also indicate that you need to draw an arrow so let's start with my solid iron 3 oxide so iron 3 is Fe plus 3, oxide is O minus 2, switch my charges, I get a 2 and a 3, and I'm going to erase the charges. I don't need them once I have canceled and switched them. Reacts with indicates that I need a plus sign, and then carbon monoxide gas is covalent, which is going to be CO, yields means I draw my arrow, solid iron metal that's going to be fe for iron and because they told me it's solid i'll put a little s i also have a solid next to iron three oxide 
and carbon monoxide is a gas. So I guess I'll go ahead and include those, include those phase notations. And means put a plus, and then we'll have carbon dioxide gas final, which is covalent. So I just used the prefixes and I put a little g for gas. And this is the translated equation. And let's try another one. Magnesium burning in air reacting with, that's a plus, oxygen to produce, means draw my arrow, magnesium oxide. So magnesium is just Mg. It is not a diatomic, so I will not put a 2 next to it. Burning in air is nothing, no information necessary. Um, reacting with means plus. Oxygen, on the other hand, is one of my seven diatomics, so I need to put a two next to it. And then to produce magnesium oxide, and this is ionic, so I need to balance my charges. Magnesium is plus two, oxide is minus two. They cancel, and this is my final answer for my translation. Note that this is two oxygens on the left, but we only have one on the right. And we're going to deal with that in the next section when we balance the equations. However, as it stands, this is, these are the correct reactants, and this is the correct product. Sodium oxide reacts with water to form sodium hydroxide. Sodium is plus one, oxide is minus two, switch them. Get rid of my charges. Reacts with means plus. Water is H2O to form. Sodium is plus one. Hydroxide is minus one. Plus one and minus one cancel. And there's my answer. This is telling you that you have a double replacement reaction, which is just specifying what kind of reaction it is, but you don't actually need it to translate. So we start here. Lead 2 chloride and sodium chromate forms the products lead 2 chromate and sodium chloride. So lead 2 chloride, lead is plus 2, chloride is minus 1, switch those charges. And sodium, which is plus 1, chromate, which is minus 2, switch those charges forms lead to chromate plus two and minus two cancel and sodium which is plus one chloride minus one plus one and minus one cancel and there's my final equation the decomposition of potassium chlorate with heat yields. So that's going to be my arrow. We'll put a triangle for heat. Potassium chloride and oxygen gas. Potassium chlorate is K plus 1. Chlorate is ClO3 minus 1. Plus 1 and minus 1 will cancel. With heat will yield potassium chloride, K plus 1. Chloride is minus 1. Plus 1 and minus 1 cancel and oxygen gas. Oxygen is a diatomic, so it needs a 2. The combustion reaction between, again just telling you what kind of reaction it is, ethanol and oxygen form water and carbon dioxide. Ethanol is given to you in the parentheses, and that's going to be C2H5OH, plus oxygen, which is diatomic, so it's going to be O2, form water and carbon dioxide. In the next section, we'll take these reactions and we will learn how to balance them.